Are you a chiropractor, physical therapist, acupuncturist, wellness practitioner, or other clinic owner looking to attract more patients and grow your healthcare practice? Welcome to the Clinic Marketing Podcast. Together, we'll explore topics like SEO, local search engine optimization, website design, social media marketing, content creation, helpful marketing tools, AI, and more. You'll learn how to effectively leverage these tools to increase your online visibility, engage with your target audience, and ultimately drive more traffic to your practice. From understanding the latest marketing trends to implementing best practices, we'll break down complex concepts into easy-to-understand nuggets of wisdom. You'll get practical tips to help you stay ahead of the curve and outshine your competition. Get ready to unlock the secrets of successful clinic marketing. Together, let's propel your practice. Thank you so much for listening here. I think you're going to enjoy this clip. It's from a popular episode in our archives. Don't forget, you can leave a review on iTunes. It would mean the world. It helps spread the word about this podcast. All right, let's get into the episode. On this episode of the Clinic Marketing Podcast, we're asking, how do you really feel about your website? Do you love it? Do you hate it? Do you have a love-hate relationship with your website? Hi, I'm Darcy Sullivan with Propel Marketing and Design. Welcome to this episode. We're looking at your website and asking, does it spark joy? Does it make you happy to own your website? We're looking at some of the most common frustrations I hear from website owners when it comes to their clinic's website, giving some suggestions on how you can handle these. And it all starts with people not feeling comfortable using their own website. You know, websites these days are made with the simplicity factor that it's supposed to be easy for you to jump in and make changes. But oftentimes people still feel very overwhelmed using their current website. That's why whenever we work with a client on SEO and do a project for them at the project wrap up, we also take that time to jump into the clients back into their website with them and show them how to navigate through the admin panel, how to make small changes to their website, how to add meta information like the meta page title and page descriptions, and how to do common items that will make it a lot easier for you just to jump in and make small changes on your website rather than having to contact your website designer, waiting for them to get back to you, you submitting the list of changes that are needed, then getting back to you and playing the whole back and forth game. Obviously, there are times when it makes a lot more sense to have a website designer jump in and make bigger modifications or have a copy editor go in and rewrite copy. But there are times when you just need to jump in and make some small changes. And I know that there are a lot of clinic owners out there who have websites and they just don't feel that level of comfort of making edits to the website. So I have a couple tips for you when it comes to that. One, first and foremost, whether you feel comfortable making edits to your website or not, you always want to make sure that you have admin access to both your website and your hosting company if they're separate. If you have a Wix website or a Squarespace website, those are combined. But if you have a WordPress website, you want to make sure that you have access to your WordPress username and login in addition to your hosting company 
which might be something like WP Engine or GoDaddy. Once you confirm that you do have your username and password, put those somewhere safe where you know you can always refer back to them. And it's always good to give somebody else that you trust um, admin access to your website as well in case for some reason you might get locked out. Now, when it comes to feeling comfortable and confident making small changes to your website, and again, we're not asking you to jump in and become a web designer overnight, but it can be very frustrating if you just need to know how to do a couple simple things to your website. One thing that I suggest is either when you're done with your website set up using a designer to set up your website, ask them to walk you through on a recorded Zoom call how to make changes to your website just so you feel comfortable and confident in doing that. Some of the things include adding pages, adding blog posts, adjusting a menu, adding an image, adding content to your website text, adding a link, both opening outside of your website and going from a page in your website to another section in your website. Those are some of the basics that you really want to make sure that you can just jump in and change. Worst thing to happen is you notice that there's a misspelled word or something so small that it would be so easy if you just had access to go in and change that. So I recommend if you are just getting your website set up, that you ask the person that's setting it up to, again, just jump on a Zoom call with you and record it and have them walk you through some of the basics. You can make a list out ahead of time to identify what items you want to have and you want to go over during that session. And it can also be stuff like what size images should I use for certain areas or how did you make that image a circle instead of a square and how did you adjust the spacing on this? But just make a small list and have them jump on a Zoom with you to walk through that. And the same thing goes if you are currently working with a designer or somebody that helps you or assists you with your website regularly. Just again, you can always ask them to jump on a Zoom call and go over those particular items and record the session so you have that to reference later if you need to jump in and make any small changes. Which leads us to one question that I get asked all the time, which is, what website platform should you be on? Some people say that they are on Squarespace and they love it, while others say they're on Squarespace and they hate it. Some people purposely move away from WordPress because they had a bad experience with it, while others move towards it because they feel like it's a little bit more superior when it comes to SEO, search engine optimization. When you're wondering what platform should I be on, my suggestion with that would be that you want to be on a website platform that you feel comfortable using. Now, the big website platforms, WordPress, Squarespace, Wix, they're all user friendly and they are all SEO friendly. Most clients that we work with are running on one of those platforms, or some people are using clinics, sites, or get clear sites as well. All of these have the foundation for good SEO, meaning they're a good platform for SEO. But just because you're using a good platform for SEO doesn't mean you're doing SEO. We talk a lot about SEO, search engine optimization on this podcast and you can go back and listen to one of the previous episodes that we've done specifically on SEO. But when it comes to looking and thinking the grass is always greener, whether you're looking at another website platform or you're looking at the layout of somebody else's website, you want to keep in mind ease of use, how quick it loads, and the content that's on the site. Oftentimes, people look over at somebody else's website and they think, oh, well, it's got these cool rollovers and it's got this and it's got that. But that doesn't necessarily mean that that website is actually performing better than your website. So you want to do a little research 
And you want to make sure that you're not just copying your competition, but that you are setting up your website for success based on who your target audience is. Which leads us into another frustration that I hear all the time from clinic owners. And that's that they feel like their messaging or their branding is off on their website. And this could be for a number of reasons. It could be that they don't feel confident in writing and they were in charge of writing their own website. It could be that they had somebody set up their website for them. So the person setting up the website used either canned content or looked to their competition to create the content, the text that's on the website. And so it doesn't really reflect who the brand is. So take some time to ask yourself when you look at your website, does this really represent who we are as an organization? You want to make sure that you're really focusing on content that is going to connect with your target audience. As it relates to your target audience, visiting your website and taking the actions that you want them to take when they arrive at your website. The next frustration that I hear from people is they just don't know what's going on on their website, meaning they either haven't installed an analytics system like Google Analytics or that they have installed Google Analytics and they're just looking at it and they just see numbers and data and they can't really directly correlate that information to what's happening when somebody's coming to the website. Are they the right people that are coming to their website? Is that what the issue is versus people not coming to their website? And in an upcoming episode, we're going to do an episode on Measure What Matters, where we dive into Google Analytics and website traffic data and talk about what really matters and what does it really mean? Because who cares if a million people are coming to your website If the million people coming to your website will never step foot in your clinic or ever hand money over to you, if it's not going to end up in a positive transaction, then does it really matter? We want to make sure that you are driving the right traffic to your website and then that they're converting when they get there. So let me ask you, how do you feel about your website? Do you feel that your website needs a little love? Well, hey, we're going to head out shortly, but before we do, I would love to share with you a brand new free webinar that I just put together called Patient Driven SEO for Clinic Owners, three simple steps to attract more patients online without spending one cent on ads. You can find this by visiting propelyourcompany.com slash learn in this free training, you will learn what SEO is, how to improve your rankings in the map section of Google, the number one thing you can do today to improve your website performance, which takes less than 10 minutes, why SEO has such a huge impact on your company's bottom line and how to leverage it to get more leads, where to focus your efforts online for maximum results along with how to integrate the latest in AI to simplify the whole process. Again, you can sign up for that webinar by visiting propelyourcompany.com slash learn. 